So back when the uh, ANC began, there was a lot of hope. Now the January 8th statement is certainly the big political story of the day. Now, uh, when the ANC was in exile, the party would broadcast its annual January 8th statement on Radio Freedom. The address was used to instruct cadres inside and outside the country on their marches orders uh, for the year. The ANC delivered its first January 8th statement back in 1972. It's since grown over time. However, the party is now faced with a litany of challenges as the country is expected to hold the local government elections later this year. The ANC National Chair is Gwede Mantashe. He joins us now via our video line for more on this. Mr. Mantashe, great to have you on the program. Thanks so much for making time for the AM report. So, 109 years, some wager, major wins, some major losses. Let's begin by perhaps your take on the state you feel the ANC find itself in now. The, the ANC is uh, 109 years. I must wish all members of the ANC supporters and to people in general, happy birthday. 109 years is a milestone. Uh, we're going through a, a, a difficult period, uh, which is uh, natural for an organization as old as the ANC. It will go up and risk the peak and go down, risk the trough, but it has a responsibility to always pick itself up and move ahead uh, because we must have another 100 years as the African National Congress. Right. Let's hone in on what some people consider to be the party's biggest headache at the moment, and that has to do with some of the resolutions taken at the NASRAC conference. Top of mind is the step aside resolution. Ace Makashule has been in court as the senior member of the ANC. But interestingly enough, he's in a position you once occupied for two terms, so to speak. Take me through what you feel what's happening now is doing to the office of the Secretary General of the ANC. After I can't have that experience. I never had it. I was not in court for 10 years. I was Secretary General, so I don't have that experience. But the reality of the matter is uh, the NC from time to time has gone through difficulties with problems at the top. I don't know if you remember that after the Morogoro conference, there was a group of eight that was ultimately expelled from the NC that totally rejected the resolutions of the conference. But the NC was patient with them. It kept them around. Uh, it only expelled them in 1975. Uh, and that is the nature of an old organization. It always starts from the point that no board is incorrigible, and therefore it persists on trying to correct the behavior of individuals. And it is not different now. Right. And perhaps it's worth us going down memory lane to try and understand the ANC's origins and how that links to the situation we're in now. It, it's a good moment to reflect back. Take me through, I guess, some of the moments of the ANC's founding that you still think are worth holding on to today. The ANC was founded in 1912. Um, uh, after many gallant wars that were led by chiefs and kings of our country, uh, I was born in the Eastern Cape. I always talk to people about uh, General Jongumsob uh, of Makom, who led seven years, seven of the nine wars of dispossession uh, gallantly. And there are many of those, the Battle of Central, you can list uh, many uh, of these wars. And in after the, 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 the 1906 battle with Bambata, then it was decided to form an organization to fight uh, this colonialism. And the answer was formed. Here it is after 82 years of fighting. We attained our freedom, many labeled in many ways. You know, if you were never before 1994 and you are after 1994, it is to say anything. We are now a free country. People say what they want. The fact that you can uh, question the answers uh, behavior publicly and no police will visit you in itself is a reflection of the progress we've made. So this is where we are. The ANC has gone to various periods. I don't know if you remember that uh, a man called uh, Pixnika Isaga 
mm -hmm. the president of the ANC, right. was a brilliant intellectual, led the ANC, but when he became president, he didn't have a great president. And again, uh, it went to Mahabani, tried to revive it. It didn't get revived until Kuma took over. And Kuma revived it in the 40s. So the ANC has gone through various phases and periods. And this is but one of them. And we must never be discouraged because there are problems and challenges. Right. You know, there, there are two sides to every coin. Yes, people can say whatever they want, but sometimes that can become the big issue, especially for a diverse organization like the ANC. What would you say is the organization's biggest headache today? The biggest headache today is ability of the ANC to deal with corruption and improve the reputation of the African National Congress in the eyes of the people. The problem with corruption is that if you of us uh, get caught in corrupt activities, it is said ANC is corrupt. We have a responsibility to ring fence inst instances of corruption and uh, explain that the ANC is not corrupt. And actually the ANC is resolved to resolve all those problems and improve its image. And we must not compromise on that. We must not coexist with, with corruption. We must be an organization that is decisive in dealing with this. That is the biggest challenge today, but it will only happen if we renew the organization and the organization improve its capacity to deal with these challenges. Yeah, Chair, if, if, we, if we're being fair and if we're being honest, that's stuff we've heard before. So perhaps you might be able to take us into your confidence about why you think it's so difficult to finally see these things through, even though I think the unanimous sentiment is we want to have renewal in the ANC, we want to turn the tide and restore confidence in, in the people, so to speak. It's stuff we hear every time, you know, President Cyril Ramaphosa speaks in his capacity as a leader in the African National Congress, but it appears to be a difficult thing to push through, isn't it? It's not a difficult thing to push through. Um, a movement uh, that is correcting itself will not have instant solutions. It will always try to uh, correct itself. It will go through difficulties. There will be improvement in certain aspects of the organization. Can I tell you, uh, Ayanda, the fact that we're discussing this issue today in itself is positive, in the sense that it keeps the consciousness of our people alive and be able to be engaged in dealing with all these issues. So uh, it's not a hopeless situation because we're going under the tables, we're afraid. It is a very hopeful situation because we're talking openly about it and saying, listen, there are these cases, for example, Many people talk about the, the Ace Mahatula case. And I was reminding one member of this, I said, people are 13 in that case. It's not Ace Mahatula case. It's the case of 13 people are charged for the asbestos houses in the Free State Project. And we must always structure it as 13, because if we make it the Ace Mahatula case, we are justifying the argument that it is the ANC that is in the dock when there are people who are charged in that case. So uh, the more factual we are, the better we can be in society. Mm. Of course, the added challenge this year to the plight of the ANC, as is the case for all other organizations in the world, is the COVID-19 pandemic. Local government elections now just weeks away. Uh, how is the party going to go about implementing the things that you've just outlined now? You know, strengthening its hold amongst the people, renewing its image amongst the constituency. Uh, take me through your thinking at this stage as an organization around that issue. You see, Ayanda, um, the, the, the COVID-19 is a big challenge. It has almost stopped life. But when the ANC resolved to say, we'll, we'll uh, save lives and protect livelihoods, uh, that was a major decision too, because it said, as we protect lives, we must not kill the economy because people must still have livelihoods. And the third quarter results of the economic assessment, where there was a massive recovery, 
uh, prove the correctness of that decision. Now, uh, uh, what is important about the COVID-19 is that though it is bad, try to stop everything, it has also educated us that we can do things differently. After all, we have not missed a single NEC meeting of the NC virtually. We, may, we met all of them. We discussed issues as robust as we can. And people continue to do work despite COVID-19. And I think we should continue doing so. And we must start preparing for local government elections. We listen to the rules, abide by the rules, but we'll have to reach out to the people. You know, yesterday, I was in a meeting talking about um, the response to the vaccine. Uh, that is not my area of speciality. But what was impressive for me was the interest that was taken in that virtual meeting, people were not ANC members, particularly. People were having an interest on the subject. There were uh, almost 300 of them uh, uh, in a Zoom meeting discussing those. So discussion and engagement continue uh, despite COVID-19. All right, Kwede Mantashe, thanks very much for your time. Kwede Mantashe is the Mineral and Energy Resources Minister, but speaking to us today as in his capacity as chair of the African National Congress.